What's up, everybody? It's the Digital World Podcast. And we're going to go over a very, very important uh, article that came out yesterday. And you'll see why this is important. Now, we see that Wells Fargo unexpectedly shuts all existing personal lines of credit, hinting U.S. economy on the edge. Now, to the normal uh, citizen or common person that's not really involved in um, the markets and, you know, they just go in their day-to-day uh, job, come home, just, you know, those people, which is a majority of people, um, they, they, they might see this and they, they'll look at it and be like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Don't really know what that means. Maybe it's a bad thing. But when you really trace back to the root of it and last time this happened, what does this actually mean? And I don't think um, most people understand, but I, viewers of this channel are smart and they know what's coming. And but for people who don't, they, they they might see this and just be like, "Oh, it's not a big deal," you know. But it is a big deal. It's actually a really big deal. And to show how big of a deal it is, I'm gonna go ahead and play a clip from uh, Economic Ninja. Now, if you haven't seen his videos he has awesome content so go check him out now take a listen to his experience last time lines of credits were uh, were shut off from customers take a listen early summer of 2008 there was an announcement that uh, banks were closing doing exactly what Wells Fargo just announced they're closing the lines of credit they knew that we were collapsing and they were trying to uh, to cover their butts so they were canceling lines of credit. The person I was sitting there at uh, the restaurant with, I saw it on the news. I literally was looking up, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's happening. We're collapsing. And I said, I have to leave right now. I have to run out of the bank and do something. I'll be 20 minutes. I had a checkbook on me. I had a line of credit that was open and not being used for $100,000. I literally remember it like it was yesterday because, ironically, I ran down. It was with Citibank, and I ran down to Wells Fargo, wrote a check to myself for $100,000, and deposited in the bank. Back then, just like now, uh, it's smart to have all kinds of banks open. Uh, large banks, regional banks, also credit unions, because you just don't know which one's going to collapse and have to shut its doors and lock up your assets. Uh, those are a whole other sets of videos, though. The person I was sitting with told me I was <laughs> overreacting. I raced down. I wrote that check. A little after that, I don't want to say between 7 and 14 days after that, that same person got a letter in the mail saying that their equity line of credit had been froze. Now they weren't using it, it was just open. And they were irate. This person was upset and was, look, I have excellent credits. Uh, why would you do this to me? We didn't understand why. And now we're right back where we, where we were. I told you guys in the spring that uh, you're gonna see some big stuff happen in the summer. Uh, so, so far, everything I've said, and we'll start doing some videos where we pull clips and dates has been correct. Um, this is really happening, and what's going to happen in the fall is going to blow people's minds, in my opinion. It could it could lead in, maybe not really, you, you won't be seeing the headlines uh, of a full-blown uh, banking collapse. In the fall, you may see it. They might hold it off until December, but I'm telling you what, this isn't financial advice. I'm just an investor, but this one's going to be a lot bigger than 08. And uh, to say that this isn't going to happen in the next 24 months, uh, I think is, is laughable, to be honest with you. So that's, um, my point is just to be prepared now. Um, when banks start shutting off lines of credit, that means that they are giving up the ability to make interest and charge fees on those lines. So this does come at a cost for these banks. So you have to think, and that means they are very serious that they know what's happening, all right? There's a reason why right now the, uh, the repo facility has, I want to say, $1.4 trillion in it because banks would rather make a half of 1% of uh, right now than loan it out to the nation in the form of mortgages at three at, and, you know, cars at four and five percent. That's how afraid they are. They'd rather make half of a percent than make four or five hundred times, you know, percent more than that, loaning it to you because they know what's going on. Like I said, follow the big boys. Goldman Sachs says oil's hit. Okay, and I thought that should be uh, 
very informative. And if you think about it, it's 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 coming. It's, it, the signs are all around us. But I mean, if you're not paying attention, you're not trying to look at things for what they are, then you're gonna miss it. But this is coming. And this is happening. And you guys are smart people. And that's why you're invested in digital assets. But digital assets that have utility and fundamentals. Now, we know where the banking sector is headed. And we know that there's a liquidity crisis that's at hand. And we know there's a lot of dormant capital that's sitting around in Nostro Vostro accounts. And I keep talking about this because it's so important. Because when you need that money for liquidity or for any, or if you want to unlock it, you know, so it's not dormant anymore, what are you going to resort to? And, and that's why I'm telling you, it's, it's when they, when Ripple says, or when Miguel Villa specifically said, we're looking to be sort of, or we are sort of like the lender of last resort. It makes sense now, doesn't it? Because when these banks are so tied up, they have nowhere to go, where are they going to look towards? None other than a bridge asset, something that unlocks dormant capital. And that's a multi-trillion dollar problem. That's what Brad Garlinghouse talks about. We're going to drive a massive demand for XRP because we're solving a multi-trillion dollar problem. Now, I can't tell you that it's going to happen at the end of this year next year i don't know no one knows what it's going to happen but we can see the things happening in slow motion and soon before you know it it's going to cascade and it's you know if you were in you're in if you're not then too bad it already happened but this is what i'm talking about the lender of last resort banks will have nowhere else to resort and if you want to unlock that dormant capital which could be anywhere from 10 to 27 trillion dollars where do you look towards? None other than a bridge asset that can unlock all that dormant capital. I hope this episode has brought you some value. Like and subscribe. Comment below. What are your thoughts? As always, I like hearing from you. This is the Digital World Podcast, and I'll see you in the next episode.